Hello everyone, in this video we will be learning the design of shell and tube heat exchanger. Uh, shell, and, uh, shell and tube heat exchanger is an, impo is an important equipment used in chemical, petrochemical and all those industries. So, uh, uh, its design is really important for you to uh, understand. Uh, uh, also, its design is very simple. Uh, many students find it difficult because it's a bit lengthy. Uh, if for example through Kohn's method if you use the book uh, in volume 6 it's very lengthy to study there so I have uh, summarized all main points uh, from that book uh, into a separate uh, word file which I will share with you um, uh, and we will be discussing uh, the design in this video too uh, but you will have to watch this video and don't forget to subscribe uh, then I will, will uh, share the file on my channel okay so uh, here's an example of a steam in which a mixture of steam of ethyl chloride is being cooled by a utility steam uh, of methanol methanol is basically utility stream okay uh, uh, you know, we, we are given the temperature like ethyl chloride being cooled uh, from 318 Kelvin to 272 Kelvin while methanol is being heated by uh, absorbing the uh, heat from uh, process stream. Uh, methanol, is uh, methanol is basically used uh, in the uh, as a utility stream. Okay, so in order to determine the properties of these things like thermal conductivity density and all those things you will have to watch my other video in which i taught how to use chemcare to determine the properties of all the uh, uh, all the components okay like this is of this is our property stream and here uh, is the composition like uh, percentage we will m uh, multiply by uh, we will multiply the density of uh, that component at those pressure and temperature conditions by the um, by its mole percentage you don't have to manually calculate this you can calculate the density of mixture directly in uh, chemcad uh, you will have to watch my other video okay for all this similarly we determined uh, thermal conductivity viscosity the specific heat and here are our finalized properties okay and uh, while methanol is an individual component like only methanol is being used uh, on the utility side uh, we directly determine its properties and measure temperature and pressure conditions okay so in, in shell and tube heat exchanger design we start by data, uh, finding the uh, log mean temperature difference okay you will have to study log mean temperature difference yourself why we use it uh, we, we use it to uh, determine the uh, uh, you, you can say area of our uh, shell and tube heat exchanger uh, and average area of our, our heat exchanger we don't use average basically we use log mean terminology in this uh, concept you will have to study uh, this topic yourself I can recommend you some books like Heat, uh, heat and Mass Transfer by uh, uh, Sanjil. Sanjil, okay. So uh, it's these are our temperature conditions, hot fluid inlet. After putting this, uh, these parameters, hot, uh, you see it even hot fluid inlet, hot fluid temperature. It can either be on tube side or shell side, cold fluid inlet, cold fluid outlet by mm, using those values we, d uh, we will determine log mean temperature difference so we will determine log temperature difference it's our first step okay after determining a log mean temperature difference we will have to we will also have to determine two other parameters uh, one is r and other is s so these are determined by using these graphs like uh, no, no these are determined by this formula and we will be uh, determine and uh, cor uh, temperature correction factor using a graph this graph is available in Coulson volume 6 it's figure 12.19 and here I have demonstrated how to use that graph 
like uh, my zero uh, s is 0.4 s is 0.4 these curves uh, represent uh, r so my r value is 1.84 okay uh, you will see that it will be some somewhere between 1.8 and 2 so i took it on 1.8 and i will uh, project the line in horizontal direction to get a value somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8 and uh, so I, I took the approximate value of 0.76 okay uh, next we will determine our overall heat transfer uh, 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 overall uh, we will use our overall uh, overall heat formula uh, heat rate formula uh, what you can say heat Con convection uh, formula to determine our uh, you can say approximated area of heat exchanger okay uh, so uh, before that we will also have to use uh, you have uh, let me first write uh, determine uh, temperature Uh, after uh, we have determined our temperature correction factor, we will be moving to our uh, Q. Uh, uh, but for Q, uh, we have to find our value of the heat transfer coefficient. So, I will tell you a simple trick how to find the heat transfer coefficient. You will be moving to figure 12.1 of um, Coulson volume 6, and you will find uh, this line is drawn by me. So, okay, don't get confused. Uh, the it is basically service fluid uh, or you can say the uh, utility uh, stream and it is our process uh, fluid stream it is basically to estimate the uh, uh, to get a, an estim estimation of your uh, overall heat transfer coefficient okay so overall coefficient our what is our service fluid our service fluid is hot we took it as hot heat transfer pipe okay like uh, boiling fluid and it is somewhere between them uh, we so we took it as hot heat transfer pipe okay uh, and our process steam is basically paraffins okay or condensation organic vapors it somewhere between there we cannot estimate i will tell you how will how we will know that we use the correct value of um, heat overall heat transfer coefficient uh, it, we will find it in at the last of the, our process and so uh, it is the rule of uh, uh, you can say common method that we predict a random value uh, from these uh, from these uh, so we will have um, uh, we will know at the end of the process if we took the right value or wrong okay so from here I took a value of 600 watt per meter square degree cent, uh, Celsius. Okay, I will also mention it here. Estimate now of overall heat transfer coefficient on the chart. Okay, it's our third uh, third step. On fourth, we will. Uh, find the area of our heat exchanger area of our heat exchanger will be determined by the uh, formula which is equal to u at delta tlm it's basically a um, uh, formula modified it's in basically a modified form of Newton cooling law okay. instead of overall uh, heat simple heat transfer we have overall heat transfer we have overall heat transfer coefficient and we have log and temperature difference instead of simple temperature difference okay from here we will determine the area area will be the ratio of heat transfer uh, heat transfer rate or uh, conduction convection whatever that rate is uh, to a uh, u and delta dlm okay so how we will know the value of u q is basically the heat required heat transfer rate required it can either be the heat transfer rate removal or addition rate depending upon our process stream 
it, it will be determined by the other people okay you should keep in mind that q will be determined uh, by the uh, by your energy balance like how much heat or uh, remote rate is required in your heat exchanger to, uh, and you know that uh, it is like um, uh, should i mention it here and i think uh, find the Although it's a minor step, but I still mentioned it. Uh, it's basically a difference of uh, enthalpy of products and reactants. So you will be able to calculate uh, it using your method. Now we have uh, found the value of linear to linear mode 301 meter scale. Okay. So we will be choosing a random. Uh, we will be choosing uh, some random uh, tube sizes, uh, outer dia and inner dia, <coughs> uh, and we will uh, allow. Uh, we will be allowing for thickness, and uh, we will take length as um, 4.83 meter. Okay. You can study uh, the. I can mention the topic. To better understand how to estimate the tube length, you see the proper length of tube for okay outer dia standard dimension of steel tube. These are the standard dimensions. Okay, if you to take this, uh, you can uh, then this wall of the thickness will be this. Okay, and so on. Tube diameter in the range of uh, your tube diameter will be ra uh, ranging from 16 millimeter to 50 millimeter in general. The smaller diameters are okay. After uh, studying these, uh, you can say things. If you want to design your shallow tube heat exchanger by uh, a special code, design code, you can also consult these codes which are mentioned in this topic. Okay. So after uh, I will mention it here. Estimate uh, dimension uh, by dimensions. I mean length, diameter, thickness, and all those things. By using area, I will tell you why. Okay. <coughs> we have the length. We have our estimate. Uh, okay, you can say uh, assume the outer dia and inner dia of tube. Uh, we now we will find the area area of one tube as to be. Uh, 0.303 meter scale okay so the number of tubes needed for our uh, uh, heat shallow tube heat exchanger will be area of shell divided by area of one tube okay um, so you understand we will uh, discuss later uh, we will also we will give allowance uh, for the tube but uh, it for the time being uh, in order to estimate maximum number of tubes that can be accommodated in our shallow tube heat exchanger or 986 okay so uh, it's uh, next we will I should write it here find number of tubes okay after we have found number of tubes we will determine our bundle diameter bundle diameter what is meant by bundle diameter bundle diameter is the bundle of all the tubes okay which is inside the shell and it is in the form of bundle if you know uh, what i mean okay so next we will determine bundle diameter don't worry i will upload both these documents you will be provided with both these documents okay after we have determined the bundle diameter bundle diameter how will be the bundle diameter determined tube offset diameter Okay, anti and uh, anti is number of tubes. K1 is a parameter uh, uh, variable. Uh, you can say 
Oh no no, I mean k two k one is a constant and n one is also a constant. We which we will be determined uh, uh, by uh, 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 nature of the pitch, nature of the you can say uh, and number of passes. In our case, we took two passes. You can uh, you can study how to uh, take the passes uh, from here. Uh, in our case, we took two passes, and uh, in our case, the value of variables is 0.516, and n is this. Okay. Uh, uh, as a shell mode, uh, shell has to be in gaseous phase, probably not much cleaner. We are choosing a square pitch. Okay. Square pitch is easier to clean. Um, as compared to the triangular pitch, uh, uh, that's why we are we are taking the uh, square pitch. Okay, a square pitch. Uh, in square pitch, specifically shell side is more easily cleanable. Like uh, consider cleaning a triangle from inside, and uh, consider cleaning a uh, uh, you can say a square. It's easier to clean a square from inside than a triangle. Okay, like it has corners and which go are difficult to clean. Okay. And the next step will be we are uh, we assume that we will be using split ring floating head type because of easier. Un okay, it is also mentioned in here which tube layout. Okay, uh, from as I told you, we, we will we will be using the uh, square. And other things you can uh, you can you can study it from here, but I should first cover it from my document. Okay. <coughs> okay. Shell inside diameter bundle diameter. Okay. It's basically the clearance of the uh, shell. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, that what should be the clearance uh, of the shell. Like what should we just assume that we are this? We of course we need clearance for our tube. So uh, it will be depending upon the nature of the head, head of the shell and tube, shell and tube heat exchanger. In our case, we considered a split ring as I mentioned he, uh, above. It is easier to clean. Pull through floating outside pack heading fixed you and you and uh, you figure and YouTube. You can uh, study all these types in, in the book. Okay. So we uh, simply have the value of bundle diameter. We mm, we can say intersecting it on the split thing and we projected it on the left side to get our clearance, which was which was about 69 millimeter. And uh, then we determine the uh, diameter of shell, which will be the bundle diameter. In addition to the clearance, of course, we have to be the clearance, which will be 985.1 millimeter. Okay. Next, we will determine the okay. next. We will determine the two side heat transfer coefficient. It's if uh, one of the easiest part. Okay. Uh, first of all, you will have to determine Reynolds number. Okay, I will mention it here. First of all, you will have to determine the Reynolds number. After determining, uh, of course, you have to uh, resolve the individual parameters needed for Reynolds number, like it properties are already given by our chemical or some other book from where you got those properties we have our in inside tube diameter as we are using the tube uh, tube side okay we have the velocity of tube side fluid you do you know what the, what the how we found find velocity velocity is basically the ratio of volumetric flow rate to area okay uh, like you see, uh, uh, so we have to uh, de determine the number of tube passes. We have like two. We use two passes, so number of tubes divided by number of passes is equal to number of tubes per pass. Okay. 
volumetric flow rate is determined by converting mass flow rate into this okay and all the, uh, these are basically preliminary preliminary uh, calculations need for it preliminary uh, it's difficult for me to pronounce it <coughs> Uh, so we found the tube side velocity by dividing volumetric flow rate divided by area per pass okay uh, you can uh, you will be able to see this document so don't worry and next we determine the uh, value of uh, parental number uh, it's also available uh, directly you can also uh, find it directly but you can also calculate it from the individual property these are all temperature and pressure dependent properties okay uh, viscosity cp and k we will find our parental number then we will find our length our dia okay you see Renault number uh, why we calculated the Renault number so Renault number will be needed to find the heat transfer factor okay we will simply match the Renault number like in, in our case what was the Renault number 1.1318 1, 1 into 10 is to power 8 and 10 is to power 4 sorry ah, it was 4 okay you see the 8 is 10 is to power 3 next we will enter into 10 is to power 4 section so uh, 1.38 will be some somewhere between 9 and basically the previous uh, uh, is about 3 area it will be somewhere between these two I took here and you can it, as you see at this point all the albedi lines are uh, crossing each other so we don't have to worry where we will be intersecting and just in fact that they're joining and project the line to the horizontal, uh, horizontally to the uh, to find the heat transfer factor okay Finally, we will be using the Nusselt number formula. We it's the Nusselt number formula. We you have uh, found the value of GH from here. You have found the value of Renault number. You have found the value of Prandtl number. Nusselt number is basically is equal to H D over K, where as H is heat transfer coefficient, D is diameter and K is thermal conductivity. What we want to find here is heat transfer coefficient which is tube side heat transfer coefficient we will be able to calculate it after inputting all the parameters which will we will we calculate it okay in the same uh, in the same manner you can also calculate the uh, uh, you can also calculate uh, shelf size heat transfer coefficient but there is a slight difference okay like what is the cross load area in shelf you see uh, shell is not basically uh, the complete area of shell and there is a tube bundle inside it, it which is reducing its area okay so what we what will be the area of shell it is it will be equal to the uh, tube pitch minus outer dia of tube okay into shell diameter into lb i think it's uh, clearance okay uh, let me uh, lb nay uh, baffle spacing lb basically baffle spacing and pt space same tube pitch okay so cross flow area of shell will be uh, calculated by this formula and i told you the reason about using this formula and not the direct area like we use in case of tube as as, as it has basically a tube bundle inside it which is reducing its area okay then we will calculate the mass velocity using this area okay and all the parameters needed for in uh, Renault number okay also uh, what will be the internal diameter of shell it will also be different it will not the same as internal dia of apparent dia internal dia of shell it will be basically equal to the diameter which is available for fluid to flow inside uh, on the shell side okay this uh, formula is basically given by this equation of Coulson volume 6 okay after inputting all the parameters like tube pitch and uh, you, you will be able to find the equivalent diameter on shell side okay after we have found these parameters 
choosing 25 percent before cut okay we will also calculate heat transfer factor for shelf side with, uh, by crossing the Renault level with baffle cut you see uh, our baffle uh, cut move to this uh, you, uh, and it's up to you to choose the baffle cut depending upon various pressure drop and other conditions you, I, I recommend you to read at least read Coulson volume 6 once uh, after that you can use my document to uh, ease, ease your uh, hurdle of finding graphs and table that I, I have summarized all those graphs and tables in my document okay after you have determined the shelf side heat transfer coefficient next you will be able you will be finding the overall heat transfer coefficient okay overall heat transfer coefficients involve tube side falling factor and shell side falling factor in addition to the uh, factor which we used earlier okay so how we found shell side falling factor falling factor is basically uh, the dirt factor and you will have to study it yourself and basically it's the reduction of heat transfer uh, coefficient because uh, you can say uh, you can say fouling or foul and you will have to study this stuff yourself it's the basic concept of heat transfer okay so for condensing organics <coughs> shall, say, um, shall we have a gas okay we uh, 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 these are not necessarily necessarily gases basically those are organics and we consider them as condensing organics okay uh, we, uh, we will see what is it is giving for condensing organics uh, you are directly saying the all factor to be out of five from two on tube side we have light hydrocarbon methanol is a light hydrocarbon so we took a following factor to be found five thousand okay it is tube side heat also coefficient it is uh, outer dia outer dia mean shell side here uh, uh, falling factor kw is thermal conductivity of the material or oh, i forgot to mention uh, you, uh, you also need uh, thermal conductivity of tubes or tube materials uh, which is 50 okay as you know it is also involved in heat transfer there is convection heat transfer and there is a uh, Con, uh, con conduction heat transfer involved so uh, thermal this cake account for the conductance conductance inside the shell tube heat exchange okay after inputting all the variables we found a overall heat transfer coefficient giving giving an error of seven uh, percent so you saw we assume that you see we assume the one of the heat coefficient of 600 and after uh, doing all these procedures we rechecked our overall heat transfer coefficient by using this formula which gave us a 650 which is slightly above our uh, assumed overall heat transfer coefficient and so our designing is acceptable i think there is an allowance of 30 percent or something like that uh, uh, for the design to be acceptable okay so our design is acceptable all the things which we assume to be at this point our design is acceptable theoretically next we will determine the if we get error at this point if we get error at this point we will have to move back to step 3 and revise our calculations based upon our new Thank you.
this like what if, uh, if, if if we get a uh, gre greater error like if what if I say if I get 800 watt per meter square degree heat I will repeat all my calculations from step 3 uh, up to this point using an overall heat transfer coefficient of 800 okay uh, uh, and I in number case it is uh, not needed as our design is already and next we will determine our pressure drop uh, pressure drop is uh, simply uh, simple can be calculated by simple formula gf is basically friction factor okay uh, oh yes let's see here it's a friction factor which can be calculated by a graph between Renault number and friction factor we already have determined the uh, shell side or tube side uh, node upper above and we will simply cross it with this line to find our friction factor okay we have the number of tube passes we have less dia we, uh, we can assume uh, we can neglect it in case of uh, zero wall friction okay uh, and we have density of fluid we have tube size velocity and all these parameters after inputting all these parameters only one parameter is new in this uh, formula which is uh, friction factor okay we uh, we can find our pressure drop okay similarly we have a pressure drop formula for shell side which is given by this formula uh, shell we have uh, GF okay GF or shell side is different okay you see shell side friction factor is different segment of baffle uh, and in this case there is not a single line there are multiple lines and we will be crossing uh, our null number with the line uh, of our case okay after uh, finding the pressure drop uh, you, uh, you should also know that pressure drop also interfere in our design uh, method okay if the pressure drop is too high so it means that uh, there is some error in your calculation or you uh, made some error in assuming uh, some parameter okay you might have to repeat your calculations in case of a very high pressure drop okay as a higher pressure pressure drop will need a expensive material and expensive mechanical design which will require uh, okay uh, so you will you will have to revise your parameter uh, to make sure that pressure drop is not very high i am not sure um, is, is uh, this pressure is acceptable in our case uh, but it was this much in our case on shelter okay uh, and mechanical design I, I will not discuss the mechanical design in this video because it's already turned very lengthy and but I will give you a simple hint how to design a uh, how to uh, mechanical how to uh, mechanically design uh, the uh, shallow tube heat exchanger I mean uh, what are the things uh, to do in mechanical design it will be simply the design of pressure vessel uh, so there are ISO and um, British standards uh, for uh, designing mechanically uh, shallow tube heat exchanger uh, which include wall thickness and all those things Gruyen allowance and that uh, this and that okay all those things will, will be described in mechanical design part and, and we uh, at this point we have already have covered our complete shallow tube heat exchanger design determine pressure drops okay. I hope so you found this video useful if you don't didn't find this video useful I mean if you find anything uh, which you didn't understand please let me know in the comment I will be uh, more than happy to help you individually you can also reach me at my email and also I am a freelancer <coughs> If you want me to do some of your work, I will uh, of course charge you for it. I, uh, I will not be doing your complete design for free. However, if, if you are doing for learning purpose, purpose I will uh, teach you for free. Okay? Uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel.
we'll see you in the next video have a good day or night or whatever it is okay